Olá, bom dia e bem-vindo ao nosso canal, Quinta Fonte Pipa. Hello and welcome to our channel, Quinta Fonte Pipa. This week's not going to be a long video, because uh, again, building a shed and there's only so much of that we can show you. Um, I'll take you up in a little bit and I'll show you what we've achieved. Um, but we're going to keep it short this week. We're going to say a few thank yous, answer a few questions, um, and sort of say happy Christmas to everybody. And we. Well, we'll probably have just a very short thank you Christmas video next week, won't we? And that'll be it for Christmas, so... So I would like to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody who bought me a coffee for my birthday. And all of the funds from that are going towards buying a log burner for my bedroom. We've been saving up for one of mm -hmm. you for a while, so she wants a log burner for her bedroom. Thanks again to Paul for all his help. Uh, he's gone now, he's down in the Algarve. Uh, so happy birthday as well, because it's been it was his birthday on the 18th, I think. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll see him again in February. So I'll take you up to the top and show you what we'll be doing up there. So here I am outside on a chilly day to show you what we've managed to achieve in the hay barn. We've managed to get the roof on what's going to be the hay store and we've left a decent overhang on the front here. So I might I might be able to put some small temp sort of short term use hay feeders on the front of the barn here and we've managed to to roof the barn it's going to be dark inside obviously now because it's got a complete roof on it I don't know if you can see that in the lighting and I think we've done a great job got the overhang there so the rain won't drip down onto the onto the concrete edge and the concrete edge I'm probably going to put a little capping of cement here so any rain that does come down is going to roll off and not go inside the shed and here's the back end there's a couple of wooden boards left on the roof if you can see something up there that's from me when I was up there putting the screws through and this has got the right amount of overhang here because we're going to fit a gutter to the back here so then the water will go off into another terrace because I don't want all the the, uh, the rainwater falling down into the field where the goats are because it's not going to need any more saturating because goats need dry land otherwise it rots their feet so this will be the inside of the hay barn which has still got some of the construction tools in it waiting put all the tools away expecting the rain to turn up so the generators inside etc I salvaged a telegraph pole from the farm yesterday I pulled this out last week with when Paul was here uh, it was only in the ground a, a meter or so but the, that bit's rotten so I'm going to chop it off a bit further up but I just want this to go opposite here opposite the barn I'm going to put it about here so it's in line with the shed there so we can have a square piece of shade netting out the front in the summer months and we'll have a big long strong pole to, to pull everything tight to as, a, as well against the shed because when we've done it before in the building that they're in at the moment down the bottom uh, we can't there's no big strong trees or anything to pull the, the netting tight and then it sags and then they, they catch it and then they play in it so hopefully in the summer months we'll have a big shaded area here and then we've got all this the way down to the blocks for them with their tyres and the milking parlour is going to go down there where the blocks and the water barrel are but we're obviously going to start that after this next rain patch comes hopefully we'll get a week or so of dry weather and we can get on and build the and finish the goat parlour ready to sort of start thinking about electrics or solar panels to run the, the milk chiller that we've got that's going in there and then hopefully we can get back to uh, some normality on the farm of actually sort of finalising this thing then I'm going to go back and fix all the fencing uh, for the chicken yard which is where we've been keeping the goats for the last year uh, and it's time to move them into their new barn I think we've got new babies coming in a couple of days over Christmas and into January so uh, if you like baby goats and <laughs> you, you want to see some more they're going to be here soon after Christmas now we're going to answer some questions and answers that have been sent in by Instagram, Facebook and the YouTube comment section. Um, how many goats do you have and why do you have them? We currently have 28 goats. We sold two boys yesterday 
uh, to a local chap. He's taken those away. Uh, so it's left us with 28, isn't it? And why do you have them? Uh, for milk, cheese. Land clearance. The hand clearance. Molly makes soaps with them. Yeah. Um, and generally, they're a lovely animal to have around, but it's going to be our main income because um, obviously we've been here a lot, a lot of years now. Mm. And it's like I said in our, I think it was our last video, wasn't it? Mm. We answered some questions. I'll yeah. put a link up to the top to our last video, and hopefully that should uh, bring us quite a bit of our income to survive here, because we've been struggling to make money over the years. Uh, as it's not as easy as everybody thinks to come out here and, and make money. And we're intending, once we're set up with the new milking parlour, because we need this um, 500 litre milk churn, stainless steel milk churn that we've got for keeping the milk. We need that before we can sell it commercially. Um, a lady's been buying it recently and uh, you've been giving it some, for what, a baby dog? Yes, a puppy. I've got a puppy. And um, I think it was a bit weak, wasn't it, mm -hmm. from the mother? And so we're just giving it some extra milk to keep it growth up. You both speak very good Portuguese. Did you have lessons and is it important to speak the language? I wouldn't, we didn't have no lessons. lessons. No, 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 we just picked up bits. Well, when we came here we, and we mainly socialised with just Portuguese, so uh, you've got to speak. If you want to socialise with the Portuguese and you want to fit in, you've got, you've got to learn some level of Portuguese. It doesn't have to be great, you don't have to be perfect, because I'm far from perfect, but everybody I speak to understands me. What we did when we first moved here was use Google Translate a lot. Yeah, and it's got a lot better recently. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, it was absolutely terrible when we came, wasn't it? You could write a sentence and show it to somebody and they'd just look at you like you were mad, yeah. you know. Um, do you socialise with the Portuguese or just the expat community? Well, I've sort of just answered that one, yeah. I think. But yeah, mainly we know about six, eight different people that are uh, not Portuguese, mm -hmm. uh, four of those are YouTubers uh, that we actually like, Sarah and Luke. Right, well that's the end of the, uh, <laughs> the few questions that we're going to answer this week. We've been pretty busy actually in setting up for this video, we haven't done a lot of work. We're trying to get ready because we've got rain coming in a few days so we don't want to get um, behind with the jobs we've got to do outside. I've just covered all the cement up that we bought for the milking parlour and things like that to make sure that none of that gets ruined in this rain that we're... <laughs> Whether we get it or not, we'll have to see, eh? But sometimes the weather forecasts change at this time of the year. So I would also like to say a huge thank you to our new Patreon supporter, David. Thank you very David. much. Uh, so please, yeah, if you fancy becoming a Patreon, there's a link in the description below. Like, subscribe the video, please share it around. Um, we've just passed all 3,000 subscribers and we'd like to keep growing. Uh, this week I've been over and I helped Luke and Sarah. Well, I helped Luke mainly, not really poor Sarah, but Luke with his digger. Um, so I'd like to say thanks to Luke and Sarah because I think they've given us a mention this week for what we went over there and did, which there's no need. Well, I'm always happy to go and help them. They're a really nice couple. Uh, and check out their channel. I'll put a link here. You can see how he's struggling to... Uh, Poor chap bought a digger and it's gone. The engine's gone bang, and he's trying to save it on a budget. So I'll um, see if I can help him. Okay, so we got the well, they <laughs> got the crank shaft out. So what's my next move? We really need to take the the crank to a specialist who will measure the size of where the bearings go and see if it can be fixed or if it's been too badly scored and damaged. In the meantime, I messaged Wait. my mate in Malta to see if he can source a new one for me. Yeah, oh, we're going to need be much a better, eh, really. We're going to need a liner, and that's where the piston goes up inside because the, the, yeah, the con well. rods come oh, up yeah. and, and broken that. But we're probably talking gibberish to most of you lot on YouTube. <laughs> um, Ready? So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's just going to be sort of getting prices for your parts and weighing up whether it's feasible for Luke to repair it or or a new engine, new engine, second-hand engine, or it's all over. Okay, um, but let's hope not. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, and my toes. <laughs> I would also like to say a thank you to Luke and Sarah who also bought me these awesome slippers for my birthday that are very, very warm and yeah, comfortable. Cool. Happy birthday to you. Speech. Speech. Thank you for keeping me alive. <laughs> Bed and clothes. Just about. <laughs> Thanks to Diane and Pete hosting. Thank you for all being here. Yes, thanks Pete and Diane. So it's a Portuguese tradition that you bite the candle under the table to make a birthday wish.
they've done it as a birthday toy. Okay. So she believes it. So yeah. she believes it. <laughs> Is that part of the process? Oh, what the hell? Is that tradition as well? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. That that wasn't weird at all. No. <laughs> We're not going to be doing that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, happy Christmas or whatever other things you might celebrate around the world. So happy holidays, I guess. Happy holidays. Probably the, the Boas festas. Yeah, boas festas in Portuguese. Boas festas e um feliz ano novo. Feliz ano novo. See you. Happy New Year. So thanks from us. Take care. And we'll see you back here next year. Bye.